A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach This recording is in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org Introduction The Hyakunin Ishu or single verses by a hundred people, were collected together in A.D. 1235 by Sadaii Fujiwara, who included as his own contribution, verse number 97. They are placed in approximately chronological order, and range from about the year 670 to the year of completion. The Japanese devote themselves to poetry very much more than we do, and there is hardly a home in Japan, however humble, where these verses, or at least some of them, are not known. They are, and have been for many years, used also in connection with a game of cards, in which the skill consists in fitting parts of the different verses together. Japanese poetry differs very largely from anything we are used to. It has no rhyme or alliteration, and little, if any, rhythm as we understand it. The verses in this collection are what are called tanka, which was for many years the only form of verse known to the Japanese. A tanka verse has five lines and thirty-one syllables, arranged thus, five seven five seven seven. As this is an unusual meter in our ears, I have adopted for the translation a five-lined verse of eight six eight six six meter, with the second, fourth, and fifth lines rhyming, in the hope of retaining at least some resemblance to the original form while making the sound more familiar to English readers. I may perhaps insert here, as an example, the following well-known tanka verse, which does not appear in the Hyakunin Ishu collection. Irete inaba, nushinaki yaro to narinu tomo, no kiba no ume yo, haru wa suru na. Though masterless my home appear when I have gone away, O oh, plum trees growing by the eaves, forget not to display thy buds in spring, I pray. This was written by Sanetomo Minamoto on the morning of the day he was murdered at Kamakura. It is necessarily impossible in a translation of this kind to adhere at all literally to the text, more especially as Japanese poetry abounds in all sorts of puns, plays upon words, and alternative meanings which cannot be rendered into English. For example, a favorite device with Japanese verse writers is to introduce what Professor Chamberlain calls a pivot word which they consider adds an elegant touch to the composition. An instance of this will be found in verse number 16, where the word matsu, though only appearing once, must be understood twice with its two different meanings. It is almost as if we should say, sympathy is what I need, lest to say I never get it. In other words, sympathy is what I need, needless to say I never get it. Other peculiarities of Japanese verse, as Professor Chamberlain points out, are the pillow word, or recognized conventional epithet, and the preface, where the first two or three lines appear to have only the slightest connection with the main idea, and simply serve as an introduction. The Hyakunin Ishu, like all Japanese classical poetry, contains no Chinese words, such as are so extensively introduced into the modern spoken language. It consists of poetical ideas clothed in poetical language, compressed within the regulation meter, embellished with various elegant word plays, and is absolutely free from any trace of vulgarity. In the old days it was only the nobles, court officials, and church dignitaries who wrote verses, or at all events only their verses have been handed down to our time, and the lower classes were not supposed to know anything at all about the art. Thus it is related that long ago Prince Ota do Kwan was hunting with his retinue on the mountains, and a storm of rain coming on, he stopped at a mountain inn to request the loan of a raincoat. A girl came at his call, and retired into the hut, coming back again in a few minutes looking rather confused, and, without saying a word, she humbly presented the prince with a yamabuki blossom, a kind of yellow rose, on an outstretched fan. The prince, much incensed at being trifled with like this, turned on his heel and went off in high dudgeon, until one of his attendants reminded him of a well-known verse which runs, Nanae yae, hana wa sake domo, 
山吹の実の一つだに、泣かず悲しき。The Yamabuki blossom has a wealth of petals gay, but yet in spite of this, alas, I much regret to say, no seed can it display. The words as printed in the last couplet mean, I am very sorry that it has not a single seed, but if mino is taken as one word, it would mean, I am very sorry that the Yamabuki, i.e. herself, the mountain flower, has not any raincoat. And this was the maiden's delicate apology. The prince, we are told, was astonished to find such culture and learning in a peasant girl. Perhaps what strikes one most in connection with the Hyakunin issue is the date when the verses were written. Most of them were produced before the time of the Norman conquest, and one cannot but be struck with the advanced state of art and culture in Japan at a time when England was still in the very elementary stage of civilization. The collection, as will be seen, consists almost entirely of love poems and what I may call picture poems, intended to bring before the mind's eye some well-known scene in nature. And it is marvelous to what effect little thumbnail sketches are compressed within thirty-one syllables, however crude and faulty the translation may be. For instance, verses number seventy-nine, eighty-seven, and ninety-eight. But the predominating feature, the undercurrent that runs through them all, is a touch of pathos which is characteristic of the Japanese. It shows out in the cherry blossoms which are doomed to fall, the dewdrops scattered by the wind. The mournful cry of the wild deer on the mountains, the dying crimson of the fallen maple leaves, the weird sadness of the cuckoo singing in the moonlight, and the loneliness of the recluse in the mountain wilds, while those verses which appear to be of a more cheerful type are rather of the nature of the Japanese smile described by Lafcadio Hearn as a mask to hide the real feelings. Some explanation is necessary as to the names of the writers of the different verses. The Japanese custom is to place the family or clan name first, followed by the preposition no, meaning of, and then the rest of the name. But as this would be appreciated only by those who are familiar with the language, the names have been transposed, and the titles and ranks translated as far as possible into English. At the same time, the full name and title have also been given in their Japanese format. For many of these names, such as Yamabe no Akahito. Abe no Nakamoto, Ono no Komachi, are so well known to Japanese students that they would hardly be recognized in their transposed form. A word may be added as to pronunciation for the benefit of those who are not familiar with Japanese. Every vowel in poetry must be sounded. There are no diphthongs. A long vowel is lengthened out as if it were two syllables. A final n, letter n, which was originally mu. Must be sounded as a full syllable, and a final vowel is generally elided if the following word begins with a vowel. The continental sound is to be given to a, e, and i, pronounced a, e, and e in Japanese, and the aspirate is sounded. The present translator makes no claim that his verses have any merit as English poetry, nor where there is so much uncertainty among the Japanese themselves as to the real meaning of some of these old verses, does he claim that his translation is in all cases the correct one? In two or three instances, the original has been purposely toned down somewhat to suit English ideas. He has, however, tried to reproduce these verses from old Japan in such a way that a few of the many who now are unfamiliar with the subject. May feel sufficient interest in them to study a more scholarly translation, such as that by Mr. F. V. Dickens, recently published in the Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society, or Professor Clay Macaulay's literal translation, both of which are evidently the result of hard labor and great care, and may thus learn to appreciate a branch of Japanese art, which has been far too much neglected up to the present. William N. Porter. Whatever defects, as I doubt not there will be many, fall under the reader's observation. I hope his candor will incline him to make the following reflections: that the works of Orientals contain many peculiarities, and that through defect of language, few European translators can do them justice. William Collins. End of introduction. A hundred verses from Old Japan, translated by William Porter. Numbers one to ten. 
Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. This recording is in the public domain. Number 1 by Tenchi Tenno, Emperor Tenchi. Out in the fields this autumn day, they're busy reaping grain. I sought for shelter neath this roof, but fear I sought in vain. My sleeve is wet with rain. Number 2 by Jito Tenno, Empress Jito. The spring is gone, the summer's come, and I can just descry the peak of Ama no Kagu, where angels of the sky spread their white robes to dry. Number 3 by Kakinomoto no Hitomaro, the nobleman Kakinomoto. Long is the mountain pheasant's tail that curves down in its flight, but longer still, it seems to me, left in my lonely plight, is this unending night. Number 4 by Yamabe no Akahito, Akahito Yamabe. I started off along the shore, the seashore at Tago, and saw the white and glistening peak of Fuji all aglow through falling flakes of snow. Number 5 by Sarumaru Tayu, Sarumaru, a Shinto official. Hear the stag's pathetic call far up the mountainside, while tramping o'er the maple leaves, wind scattered far and wide, this sad, sad autumn tide. Number 6 by Chunagon Yakamochi, the imperial adviser Yakamochi. When on the magpie's bridge I see the hoar-frost king has cast his sparkling mantle, well I know the night is nearly past. Daylight approaches fast. Number 7 by Abe no Nakamaro, Nakamaro Abe. While gazing up into the sky, my thoughts have wandered far. Methinks I see the rising moon above Mount Mikasa at far-off Kasuga. Number 8 by Kizen Hoshi, the priest Kizen. My home is near the capital, my humble cottage bare, lies southeast on Mount Uji, so the people all declare, my life's a hill of care. Number 9 by Ono no Komachi, Komachi Ono. The blossom's tint is washed away by heavy showers of rain, my charms, which once I prized so much, are also on the wane, both bloomed, alas, in vain. Number 10 by Semimaru The stranger who has traveled far, the friend with welcome smile, all sorts of men who come and go meet this mountain style, they meet and rest a while. End of section A hundred verses from Old Japan, translated by William Porter Numbers 11 to 20. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. This recording is in the public domain. Number 11 by Sanki Takamura, the Privy Councillor Takamura. O fishers in your little boat, quick tell my men, I pray. They'll find me at Yasoshima. I'm being rowed away, far off across the bay. Number 12 by Sojo Henjo, Bishop Henjo. O stormy winds, bring up the clouds and paint the heavens gray, lest these fair maids of form divine should angel wings display and fly far, far away. Number 13 by Yose in the retired emperor Yose. The Mina stream comes tumbling down from Mount Tsukuba's height. Strong as my love, it leaps into a pool black as night with overwhelming might. Number 14 by Kawara no Sadaijin, the minister of the left of the Kawara district of Kyoto. Ah, why does love distract my thoughts, disordering my will? 
I am like the pattern of the cloth of Michinoku Hill, all in confusion still. Number 15 by Koko Tenno, the Emperor Koko. Mother, for thy sake I've been where the wakana grow, to bring thee back some fresh green leaves, and see my koromo is sprinkled with the snow. Koromo is the emperor's robe. Number 16 by Chunagon Ariwara no Yukihira, the imperial adviser Yukihira Ariwara. If breezes on Inaba's peak sigh to the old pine tree, to whisper in my lonely ears that thou dost pine for me, swiftly I'll fly to thee. Number 17 by Ariwara no Narihira Ason The Minister Narihira Ariwara All red with leaves Tatsuta's stream so softly pearls along, the everlasting gods themselves who judge twixt right and wrong ne'er heard so sweet a song. Number 18 by Fujiwara no Toshiyuki Ason The Minister Toshiyuki Fujiwara Tonight on Suminoe Beach the waves alone draw near, and as we wander by the cliffs no prying eyes shall peer, no one shall dream we're here. Number 19 by Ise, the Princess Ise Short as the joints of bamboo reeds that grow beside the sea, on Pebble Beach at Naniwa I hope the time may be when thou art away from me. Number 20 by Motoyoshi Shinno, the heir apparent Motoyoshi. We met but for a moment, and I'm wretched as before. The tide shall measure out my life unless I see once more the maid whom I adore. End of section. A hundred verses from old Japan, translated by William Porter, numbers twenty one to thirty. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. This recording is in the public domain. Number twenty one by Sose Hoshi, the priest Sose. The moon that shone the whole night through this autumn morn I see, as here I wait thy well known step, for thou didst promise me. I'll surely come to thee. Number 22 by Bunya no Yasuhide Yasuhide Bunya The mountain wind in autumn time is well called hurricane. It hurries canes and twigs along and whirls them o'er the plain to scatter them again. Number 23 by Oe no Chisato Chisato Oe this night the cheerless autumn moon doth all my mind enthrall, but others also have their griefs, for autumn on us all hath cast her gloomy pall. Number 24 by Kanke I bring no prayers on colored silk to deck thy shrine today, but take instead these maple leaves that grow at Tamuke, finer than silk are they. Number 25 by Sanjo Udaijin, the minister of the right of the Sanjo district of Kyoto. Here thou art as modest as the little creeping spray upon Mount Osaka which hides beneath the grass them pray, wander with me today. Number 26 by Teishin Ko, Prince Teishin. The maples of Mount Ogura, if they could understand, would keep their brilliant leaves until the ruler of this land passed with his royal band. Number 27 by Chunagon Kanesuke, the imperial adviser Kanesuke. O rippling river Izumi that flows through Mika Plain, why should the maid I saw but now and soon shall see again torment my lovesick brain? Number 28 by Minamoto no Muneyuki Ason The Minister Muneyuki Minamoto 
The mountain village solitude in winter time I dread. It seems as if when friends are gone and trees their leaves have shed, all men and plants are dead. Number twenty nine by Oshikochi no Mitsune. Mitsune Oshikochi. It was a white chrysanthemum I came to take away. But which are colored, which are white, I'm half afraid to say, so thick the frost to day. Number thirty by Mibu no Taramine. Taramine Mibu. I hate the cold, unfriendly moon that shines at early morn, and nothing seems so sad and gray when I am left forlorn as day's returning dawn. End of section. A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Numbers 31 to 40 Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org This recording is in the public domain. Number 31 by Sakanoue no Korenori Korenori Sakanoue Surely the morning moon, I thought, hath bathed the hill in light, but no, I see it is the snow that, falling in the night, has made Yoshino white. Number 32 by Harumichi no Tsuraki Tsuraki Harumichi the stormy winds of yesterday the maple branches shook, and see, a mass of crimson leaves has lodged within that nook and choked the mountain brook. Number 33 by Kino Tomonori Tomonori Kino The spring has come, and once again the sun shines in the sky. So gently smile the heavens that it almost makes me cry when blossoms droop and die. Number 34 by Fujiwara no Okikaze Okikaze Fujiwara Gone are my old familiar friends, the men I used to know, yet still on Takasago beach the same old pine trees grow that I knew long ago. Number 35 by Kino Tsurayuki Tsurayuki Kino the village of my youth is gone, new faces meet my gaze, but still the blossoms at thy gate, whose perfume scents the ways, recall my childhood's days. Number 36 by Kiyowara no Fukayabu Fukayabu Kiyowara Too short the lovely summer night, too soon tis passed away. I watched to see behind which cloud the moon would chance to stray. And here's the dawn of day. Number 37 by Bunya no Asayasu Asayasu Bunya This lovely morn the dewdrops flash like diamonds on the grass, a blaze of sparkling jewels, but the autumn wind, alas, scatters them as I pass. Number 38 by Ukon my broken heart I don't lament, to destiny I bow, but thou hast broken solemn oaths, I pray the gods may now absolve thee from thy vow. Number 39 by Sangi Hitoshi, the privy counselor Hitoshi. Tis easier to hide the reeds upon the moor that grow, than try to hide the ardent love that sets my cheeks aglow for somebody I know. Number 40 by Taira no Kanemori Kanemori Taira Alas, the blush upon my cheek, conceal it as I may, proclaims to all that I'm in love, till people smile and say, Where are thy thoughts today? End of section A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Numbers 41 to 50. Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org. This recording is in the public domain. 
Number 41 by Nibu no Tadami. Tadami Nibu. Our courtship that we tried to hide, misleading is to none. And yet, how could the neighbors guess that I had yet begun to fancy anyone? Number 42 by Kiyowara no Motosuke. Motosuke Kiyowara. Our sleeves, all wet with tears, attest that you and I agree that to each other will be true till Pine Tree Hill shall be sunk far beneath the sea. Number 43 by Chunagon Atsutada, the Imperial Advisor Atsutada. How desolate my former life, those dismal years ere yet, I chanced to see thee face to face, t'were better to forget those days before we met. Number 44 by Chunagon Asatada, the Imperial Advisor Asatada. To fall in love with womankind is my unlucky fate. If only it were otherwise, I might appreciate some men whom now I hate. Number 45 by Kentokuko, Prince Kentoku. I dare not hope my lady love will smile on me again. She knows no pity, and my life I care not to retain, since all my prayers are vain. Number 46 by Sone Yoshitada, the priest Neoshitada. The fishing boats are tossed about when stormy winds blow strong. With rudder lost, how can they reach the port for which they long? So runs the old love song. Number 47 by Ekei Hoshi, the priest Ekei. My little temple stands alone, no other hut is near. No one will pass to stop and praise its vine-grown roof, I fear, now that the autumn's here. Number 48 by Minamoto no Shigeyuki, Shigeyuki Minamoto. The waves that dash against the rocks are broken by the wind, and turn to spray. My loving heart is broken too, I find, since thou art so unkind. Number 49 by O Nakatomi no Yoshinobu Ason, the minister Yoshinobu of priestly rank. My constancy to her I love, I never will forsake, as surely as the palace guards each night their watchfire make and guard it till daybreak. Number 50 by Fujiwara no Yoshitaka Yoshitaka Fujiwara Death had no terrors, life no joys, before I met with thee. But now I fear, however long my life may chance to be, t'will be too short for me. End of section. A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Numbers 51 to 60 Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org This recording is in the public domain. Number 51 by Fujiwara no Sanekata Ason The Minister Sanekata Fujiwara Though love, like blisters made from leaves grown on Mount Ibuki, torments me more than I can say, my lady shall not see how she is paining me. Note. The Artemisia plant, or mugwort, is used in Japan for cauterizing. A conical wad of the leaves or blossoms is placed on the spot, lit at the top, and allowed to burn down to the skin. This produces a blister and is extremely painful. Number 52 by Fujiwara no Michinobu Ason The Minister Michinobu Fujiwara Although I know the gentle night will surely follow morn, yet when I'm wakened by the sun, turn over, stretch, and yawn, how I detest the dawn. Number 53 by Udaisho Michitsuna no Haha The Mother of Michitsuna Commander of the Right Imperial Guard. All through the long and dreary night I lie awake and moan. 
How desolate my chamber feels, how weary I have grown of being left alone. Number 54 by Giro Sanshi no Haha, the mother of the Minister of State. How difficult it is for men not to forget the past. I fear my husband's love for me is disappearing fast. This day must be my last. Number 55 by Dainagon Kinto, the first advisor of state, Kinto. This waterfall's melodious voice was famed both far and near. Although it long has ceased to flow, yet still with memory's ear, its gentle splash I hear. Number 56 by Izumi Shikibu My life is drawing to a close, I cannot longer stay. A pleasant memory of thee I fain would take away, so visit me, I pray. Number 57 by Murasaki Shikibu I wandered forth this moonlit night, and someone hurried by. But who it was I could not see, clouds driving o'er the sky, obscured the moon on high. Number 58 by Dai Ni no Sammi as fickle as the mountain gusts that on the moor I've met, T'were best to think no more of thee and let thee go, But yet I never can forget. Number 59 by Akazome Amon Waiting and hoping for thy step, Sleepless in bed I lie, All through the night until the moon, Leaving her post on high, Slips sideways down the sky. Number 60 by Koshikibu no Naishi, the lady-in-waiting, Koshikibu. So long and dreary is the road that I have never been, to Ama no Hashidate, pray how could I have seen the verses that you mean. Note. Koshikibu was the daughter of Izumi Shikibu, and early became known as a poetess. The story goes that she was suspected of getting help from her mother in composing poetry, and on one occasion, during the absence of the latter at Amano Hashidate, she was selected to take part in a poetical contest at court. A day or two before the event, a nobleman laughingly asked her if she was not expecting a letter from her mother, hinting that she would not otherwise be able to produce a poem good enough for the contest, and she, touching his sleeve, improvised this verse. End of section. A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Numbers 61 to 70 Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org This recording is in the public domain. Number 61 by Ise no Tayu The Lady Ise the double cherry trees which grew at Nara in past days now beautify this palace and their blossoms all ablaze perfume the royal ways. Number 62 by Sei Shonagon The Lady Sei Too long tonight you've lingered here and though you imitate the crowing of a cock twill not unlock the toll bar gate till daylight must you wait. Note this verse has reference to the Chinese story of Prince Tan Ju, who was shut up with his retainers in the town of Kankokan. The city gates were closed from sunset to cockcrow, but during the night one of the prince's followers so successfully imitated the crowing of a cock that the guards, thinking it was daybreak, opened the gates, and the fugitives escaped under the cover of darkness. Number 63 by Sakyo Tayu Michimasa, the Shinto official Michimasa, of the left side of the capital. If we could meet in privacy where no one else could see, softly I'd whisper in thy ear this little word from me, I'm dying, love, for thee. Number 64 by Gon Chunagon Sarayori, the assistant imperial advisor Sarayori. So thickly lies the morning mist that I can scarcely see 
The fish nets on the river bank, the river of Uji, past daybreak, though it be. Number 65 by Sagami Be not displeased, but pardon me, if still my tears o'erflow. My lover's gone, and my good name, which once I valued so, I fear must also go. Number 66 by Dai So Jo Gyo Son the Archbishop Gyoson. In lonely solitude I dwell, no human face I see, and so we too must sympathize, O mountain cherry tree, I have no friend but thee. Number 67 by Suo no Naishi, the Lady in Waiting, Suo. If I had made thy proffered arm a pillow for my head, for but the moment's time in which a summer dream had fled, what would the world have said? Number 68 by Sanjo In, the retired emperor Sanjo. If in this troubled world of ours I still must linger on, my only friend shall be the moon which on my sadness shone when other friends were gone. Number 69 by No In Hoshi, the priest No In. The storms which round Mount Mimuro are wont to howl and scream have thickly scattered maple leaves upon Tatsuta's stream like red brocade they seem. Number 70 by Ryozen Hoshi The Priest Ryozen The prospect from my cottage shows no other hut in sight. The solitude depresses me like deepening twilight on a chill autumn night. End of section. A hundred verses from Old Japan, translated by William Porter, number seventy-one to eighty, read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. This recording is in the public domain. Number seventy-one by Dainagon Tsunenobu, the First Minister of State Tsunenobu. This autumn night the wind blows shrill, and would that I could catch its message as it whistles through the rushes in the thatch and leaves of my rice patch. Number 72 by Yushi Naishin no Ke no Ki, the Lady Ki of the House of Princess Yushi. The sound of ripples on the shore ne'er fails at Takashi. My sleeves all worn and wet with tears should surely prove to thee I too will constant be. Number 73 by Gon Chunagon Masafusa The Assistant Imperial Advisor Masafusa The cherry trees are blossoming on Takasago's height. O oh, may no mountain mist arise no cloud so soft and white to hide them from our sight. Number 74 by Minamoto no Toshiori Ason The Minister Toshiori Minamoto O Kanon, patron of this hill, the maid for whom I pine, is obstinate and wayward like the gusts around thy shrine. What of those prayers of mine? Number 75 by Fujiwara no Mototoshi Mototoshi Fujiwara It is a promise unfulfilled for which I humbly sue. The dainty little mugwort plant relies upon the dew, and I rely on you. Number 76 by Hoshoji Nyudo Saki no Kanbaku Daijo Daijin The late regent and prime minister the lay priest of the Hosho Temple. When rowing on the open sea, the waves all capped with white, roll onward like the fleecy clouds with their resistless might. Truly a wondrous sight. Number 77 by Sutokuin, the retired emperor Sutoku. The rock divides the stream in two, and both with might and main go tumbling down the waterfall but well I know the twain will soon unite again. 
Number 78 by Minamoto no Kanemasa Kanemasa Minamoto Between Awaji and the shore, the birds scream in their flight. Full off they've made the suma guard, tossed through a sleepless night, until the morning light. Number 79 by Sakyo no Tayu Akisuke The Shinto official Akisuke of the left side of the capital. See how the wind of autumn drives the clouds to left and right, while in between the moon peeps out, dispersing with her light the darkness of the night. Number 80 by Taiken Monin Horikawa Lady Horikawa, in attendance on the Dowager Empress Taiken. My doubt about his constancy is difficult to bear. Tangled this morning are my thoughts, as is my long black hair. I wonder, does he care? End of section. A Hundred Verses from Old Japan Translated by William Porter Numbers 81 to 90 Read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach For more information, or to volunteer, please visit www.LibriVox.org This recording is in the public domain. Number 81 by Gotukutaiji Saraijin, the minister of the left of the Tokudai temple. The cuckoo's echo dies away, and lo, the branches bare. I only see the morning moon whose light is fading there before the daylight's glare. Number 82 by Doin Hoshi, the priest Doin. How sad and gloomy is the world, this world of sin and woe! Ah, while I drift along life's stream, tossed helpless to and fro, my tears will ever flow. Number 83 by Tai Kogu no Taiyu Toshinari Toshinari, a Shinto official in attendance on the Empress Dowager. From pain and sorrow all around, there's no escape, I fear. To mountain wild should I retreat, there also should I hear the cry of hunted deer. Number 84 by Fujiwara no Kiyosuke Ason The Minister Kiyosuke Fujiwara Time was when I despised my youth as boyhood only can. What would I give for boyhood now when finishing life's span, an old decrepit man? Number 85 by Shunne Hoshi, the priest Shunne. All through the never-ending night I lie awake and think. In vain I look to try and see the daybreak's feeble blink peep through the shutter's chink. Number 86 by Saigyo Hoshi, the priest Saigyo. Or come with pity for this world, my tears obscure my sight. I wonder, can it be the moon whose melancholy light has saddened me tonight? Number 87 by Jakuren Hoshi, the priest Jakuren. The rain which fell from passing showers like drops of dew still lies upon the fir tree needles and the mists of evening rise up to the autumn skies. Number 88 by Koka Mon In no Betto, an official of the Dowager Empress Koka. I've seen thee but a few short hours, as short they seem to me, as bamboo reeds at Naniwa, but tide stakes in the sea can't gauge my love for thee. Number 89 by Shikishi Naishin no Princess Shikishi. The ailments of advancing years, though I should try to hide, some day the thread will break, the pearls be scattered far and wide. Age cannot be defied. Number 90 by Impu Mon In no Osuke, the chief vice official in attendance on the Dowager Empress Impu. The fishers' clothes, though cheap, withstand the drenching they receive. But see my floods of tears have blurred the colors of my sleeve, as for thy love I grieve. End of section.
A hundred verses from old Japan, translated by William Porter, numbers eighty-one to ninety, read for LibriVox.org by Kevin Steinbach. For more information or to volunteer, please visit www.librivox.org. This recording is in the public domain. Number ninety-one. By Gokyo Goku Sesho Saki no Daijo Daijin, the regent and former prime minister Gokyo Goku. I'm sleeping all alone, and here the crickets round my head. So cold and frosty is the night that I across the bed my kodomo have spread. Number ninety-two, by Nijo in Sanuki, Sanuki in attendance on the retired emperor Nijo. My sleeve is wet with floods of tears, as here I sit and cry. Tis wetter than a low-tide rock, no one, howe'er he try, can find a spot that's dry. Number 93 by Kamakura Udaijin, the minister of the right district of Kamakura. I love to watch the fishing boats returning to the bay, the crew all straining at the oars and coiling ropes away. For busy folk are they. Number ninety four, by Sangi Masatsune, the privy councillor Masatsune. Around Mount Miyoshino's crest, the autumn winds blow drear. The villagers are beating cloth. Their merry din I hear, this night so cold and clear. Number ninety five, by Sakino Daisojo Jien. The former Archbishop Jian. Unfit to rule this wicked world with all its pomp and pride, I'd rather in my plain black robe a humble priest abide, far up the mountain side. Number ninety six, by Nudo Saki Daijo Daijin, the lay priest, a former Prime Minister of State. This snow is not from blossoms white, wind scattered here and there, that whiten all my garden paths and leave the branches bare. Tis age that snows my hair. Number ninety-seven, by Gon Chunagon Sadaiye, the assistant imperial adviser Sadaiye. Upon the shores of Matsuho, for thee I pine and sigh. Though calm and cool the evening air, these salt pans, caked and dry, are not more parched than I. Number ninety-eight, by Juni Ietaka, the official Ietaka. The twilight dim, the gentle breeze by Nara's little stream, the splash of worshippers who wash before the shrine, all seem a perfect summer's dream. Number ninety-nine, by Gotoba In, the retired emperor Gotoba. How I regret my fallen friends! How I despise my foes! And tired of life, I only seek to reach my long day's close, and gain at last repose. Number one hundred, by Juntoku In, the retired emperor Juntoku. My ancient palace I regret, though rot attacks the eaves, and o'er the roof the creeping vine spreads out and interweaves, unpruned its straggling leaves. End of a hundred verses from old Japan.